on this episode, game design goals. I want actual flames to appear on the enemy. We understand and execute the assignment. This looks sick. And we deliver a poignant post-mortem. Our enemies burn now. They burn now. <laughs> Ah, hi everybody, this is Christian from uh, LazyDevs Academy. Welcome to episode... Is it 92? Oh my gosh, it's 92 of our advanced schmuck tutorial. No, we are... We are... We are doing the finishing stuff. We are doing the gameplay stuff. And there's a... There's a funny thing, I think. This is a funny aspect of, of game development, I think. Because as... When you're playing games... You're very much thinking about the gameplay. You're very much thinking about all the rules and everything, you know, and all the strategies, and that's all that's on your mind. So you think that this is a major part of game development, like, like this, like this takes a lot to develop it, right? Like to develop the gameplay, right? But in real life, uh, most of the time is spent on like base of like making sprites look okay on the screen. <laughs> And the actual gameplay, the actual gameplay mechanics in terms of programming are not that difficult to implement. Figuring them out, that's difficult, we've been there, but we have figured everything out. Um, so let's do, let's just implement those mechanics that we already know how they will work. Right, so we, um, last episode we did the proximity kills, but something that I want to do now, something I want to do now is I want to do pop-ups that will communicate to our players that we're getting the 2x, 4x and so forth multiplier. We're getting more points from shooting enemies down at closer ranges. But we don't see the effects, we just, the, the number goes up, but we don't see like a visual indicator that we did good. Now, admittedly, I overpromise a little bit, this is not really gameplay, right? This is yet another visual stuff, Ugh. But that's exactly what I was talking about, doing the gameplay, making sure that we get more points when we kill enemies from close range. That is easy to do, but communicating this to the player, <laughs> <laughs> that can be quite tricky. Uh, I've prepared something here. Here's another little sprite Rooney that I will post in a doobly doo, so you can you can use it in your game as well. So these are going to be our little sprites that we're going to use as pop-ups. <clears throat> now you might be wondering, hey Christian, like this this makes no sense. These are numbers, right? We can draw numbers. We know how to do this. We have the technology to die. Um, and you would be completely right. We can draw numbers with PQ8. That is that is correct, correct among. But um, but the problem is like drawing numbers like this, numbers with like really really thick outlines and drop shadow and everything. That can be tricky to do. That can cost a lot of CPU cycles. You know, we would have to create that kind of font because it's not actually the font that we're using for the score. It's a slightly different font, I think. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, and yeah, again, we have the outline and everything. So, so yeah, using the font drawing tools, you know, our print and so forth, to draw that kind of effect is possible, but might not be desirable because it might be slowing down the game. I'm not sure. I think it will slow down the game. Uh, so I'm willing to invest this little chunk of sprite sheet space in order to fix that. Technically, we don't need this part, right? And we could, yeah. Let's let's send this this bad boy up here. Let's put it put it in here, right? Let me organize this a little bit. This is this seems a little bit. Hmm. See, this would fit in here, but then not, we wouldn't be able to use. Oh man. Yeah, mm. But definitely, this this goes definitely up here, right? Yeah, that seems good. Or does it fit perfectly in here? Is, is, it, is it like this little bit of oh, it does not fit perfectly in here okay let's let's go let's go like this this gives us this little chunky space here maybe for something useful all right so let us implement those in our sprite sheet And there we go. So um, 
so I've created like the X sprite here. That's just like the little multiplier X, right? Uh, I created that with some offset values that I actually copied from my original <laughs> prototype stuff because deriving this experimentally took a little bit of a time. It's just like little positioning tweaks that just like tend to eat up some time. Um, and then I'm using the layering technique that we have our layering ability to to add, you know combine two sprites into one sprite. I'm using this to like always reuse the X and that add a different number on front. So we have 2x, 3x and 4x. And like the center of the sprite is kind of like at the bottom line of that, that, that pop up. So it's kind of like centered around where it will pop up. Now, you might be wondering, because this is kind of difficult to see on the screen, right? Why did we use such funky, funky colors? Why did we, why does it look dark blue and dark uh, red, right? That is because we are going to do some um, palette cycling, right? And it, it just so happens that it's a little bit easier to pull off that part if we're using the first two colors of so color number one and color number two. So right now color number one is the outline and color number two is the fill, right? Uh, hear me out, it will, it will make sense in a second. For now, I'm gonna export this and then we're gonna return to Couch Map. All right, so now here in gameplay, when we're hitting the enemy where the enemy actually dies here we have like the different tiers of of different, different pop like different uh, score rewards that we can get from from killing enemy as different proximities and here's where we would need perhaps uh, make a pop-up appear so i kind of want to maybe this hmm, i want to probably this to happen after the explosion so uh, because it's going to be a, a kind of like a particle right so it will spawn on top of the explosion let's see how that works and then we're gonna go if uh, malt, so that if there is a bonus, if that's greater than one, then we're gonna add to parts, uh, we're gonna add a new particle, and it's gonna be nothing special. X is gonna be where the enemy exploded, e dot x. Y is gonna be where the enemy exploded as well. Sx is gonna be zero, we're gonna move it to up, and I figured out a good number for that, minus two, at a speed of nine, minus two, which is fast, but not too fast, right? I'm gonna add a bit of a drag, and again, that's something I figured out experimentally. 0 0.85 is a good amount of drag. We want it to go fast first, and then slow down a little bit, right? And then we're gonna give it a max age of 40. That's 40 frames. That's just enough to kind of like witness that it's happened, but not too, too much to overstay your welcome. Now, here's the problem. The Ani uh, is we're gonna do, we're gonna create a new little an Ani. We're gonna do like a little ad hoc Ani. And we're just gonna add, um, how does that, how does those animations work? Let's go, let's go 65. Let's, let's see how that works. We're gonna use a sprite particle. Um, we're gonna see in a second what the problem is. There's a problem, obviously. There's always a problem. <laughs> uh, but I just want to see something on the screen. As always, I want to just see something on the screen. Um, so 65, I wrote it down. 65 should be a 2x multiplier popping up. Oh my gosh, it's so loud. I always have to crank down the volume. All right, here, there, it, it totally works. Okay, but it's the wrong number and also it's very dark. So we have to, <laughs> these are things that we have to deal with in a second. Okay, so first of all, let's let's deal with the Ani 65. We can go 64 plus uh, malt. And that will give us the, the correct multiplier, right? Because it's gonna be, is it? Is it? No, it's not, it's the wrong multiplier, right? Because it's like, it's two. So 63, is, it should so, so when it's two, when a multiplier is two, we want it to be 65. So 63 plus two is 65, that's it, that's correct. So now we're gonna see a better feedback on this. So here we're not getting, getting any feedback, but now I'm gonna get a little bit closer. That's a 2x, that's a 2x, that's a 3x, that's a 4x. You see for a 4x, we have to really get in, into, into the grill. Yes, 2x, perfect. So the pop-ups are happening, this is this is exactly what we needed. Now the problem is those pop-ups don't look that great. They are a little bit muted. We want to color cycle them. And the reason why I did that all that stuff is that I want them to be blinking. Now we could set up an animation. We could set up multiple sprites and change the colors of the sprites, right? 
and then create like an animation or an animation library and that would create like a blinking effect but that would cost us a lot of sprite sheet space and we already wasted a bunch of sprite sheet space because we are you no know, we having the letters pixeled out instead of using the sprite function so instead what i want to do is i want to use a color palette cycling to do the blinking now the problem is obviously that we are using this sprite this sprite effect here and that is <sighs> We would have to cram in palette cycling abilities into this, right? And it has like all these functions that we actually don't need, like the P-Lock, right? So I'm, 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 I'm thinking, and what I'm thinking about is we're going to use a different, we're going to use a pop-up. We're going to create a new type of um, particle effect and we're going to call this pop-up uh, or a new type of particle. We're going to call this pop-up and it's going to be just like a really simple... Well, it's going to be actually like a wrapper for the sprite. So, so we're going to do like a sprite P, right? So the pop-up will call the sprite, right? So it's going to be just like the same thing for now. Right? It's just like we're still drawing sprites. These are pop Oh, I have to go close. These are still pop-ups, right? But the idea is now that I can now do some palette stuff on top. So for example, I'm gonna uh, do pal and we're gonna change the color number one to change to color number 13 or something, right? And then we're gonna undo that again. And now you see, and now you see, we, we change the color of the outline now, right? Because check color number one has been changed to color number three. Ooh. Okay. So we're gonna use this to kind of like cycle between two colors. So we wanna, and this is a little bit complicated now because we want to uh, flash the outline and we're gonna wanna flash the fill. So we're gonna change two colors depending on uh, uh, a timer variable, right? That we're gonna use time and modular to flash those things. So the problem is now how, because we have to like, for each particle, we have to define four numbers, right? We have to define one color uh, of the outline, the other color of the outline, one color of the fill, and the other color of the fill. That's four numbers per uh, per pop-up, right? That's, <laughs> that's a little bit a lot of numbers, I feel. So we're gonna use we're gonna use like a global palette for this. So we, here we have palette, um, we have arrays that define you know how flashing works, you know how we flash into completely white, and you know. This is great. These are great, but you know how many numbers we have just to make it, you know, a sprite change to a single color, right? We don't want to go that far. What we want to do is something like, we want to have a palette and then pop up, and then I'm gonna just write it out for now. And then it's something like, um, we only have to change the first two colors, right? We only have to change the first two colors. So for example, uh, one color would be 13, uh, and seven, I wrote down the, the different uh, changes, so 13, seven, right? So outline 13 and fill number seven. That's great now, but now we have to like uh, do these kinds of color combination for all of the different variations that we, that we need. So that would maybe pop up one, right? And then we would have pop up number two, that would be the second color. L hear me out, hear me out. I'm just walking you through the idea here, right? So maybe the same outline, but different fill, right? So we have pop up one and pop up two. And now let us cycle between those two. So we can now just like put in the pop-up number one in here. And that will just change the first two colors because we don't have, have to define every single color. We just need two colors. All right, so you see that we have like this little white text with a gray outline, but it's obviously not flashing yet. So let us do the flashing. So I figured out a good frequency of flashing is we're gonna uh, modulo T by eight. And if that's smaller than four, then, uh, oh, uh, and pal pop up one. So we're going to use a ternary and or uh, pop up number two, right? So we now switching between those two arrays. There we go. We have a bit of a flashing. So now, just like the inside is flashing, the outside is not flashing. That's great for like a silver, right? Like for a silver reward. I think we're gonna use this for the... I'm not sure which one we're gonna use this for. We're gonna see in a second. All right, so now we want to have multiple color combinations for different types of pop-ups. And we don't want to create a whole bunch of arrays for each individual color combination. So I want to put everything into one big array. So let me write this down. Split 2D, 
So we're going to create like an array of arrays as always. So 13, 7, 13, 6, these are the two color combinations that we had, right? And then I wrote another one, uh, 4, 10 is not a good combination. We're going to see how that looks now in a second. Uh, 2, 9, 7, 14, and then 9, 10. So we have now a big array that contains a whole bunch of small two number arrays and we're going to dump, dump those small two number arrays into a palette function and that will make our, um, make our little pop-ups flash or change color at least. So we're going to call it pop-up like this and now we can experiment with different pop-ups. We're going to go pal pop-up one pal pop-up two. Actually, we probably can even do something else here. Like this, <laughs> inside this. <laughs> I like this, huh? Okay, let's see. Uh, so here we have flashing, it's the same same idea, right? We're just grabbing them from one big array instead of looking up multiple arrays. Okay, and now we can check out the different color combinations. So three and four is a different combination. So this was like a silvery color, right? And this is now more of a golden or brownish golden color, right? Some, some, this seems like a little bit better. Even though silver is usually better than, than uh, and bronze, right? This still feels a little bit more meaty, right? And then five, six. And this is like a really arcadey, flashy thing, right? This really pops, right? It's kind of difficult to, to crank up the volume when everything's already very, very loud on the screen. So I really went overboard here for that kind of effect. So it's really, really obnoxiously flashy. Okay, so now we need to get those numbers somehow into our pop-up. And I'm thinking we can do something like um, palnum and we're gonna, we're gonna set it to mult. Uh, mult, it starts at two, so minus one times two. Is what I'm thinking, right? So palnum. Let me see, I, did, I solved that in a prototype differently. So we, this is a little bit of experiment, right? But we're gonna go palnum and palnum plus one. Let, let's, let's see, let, let's see, let me cook, let me see. Okay, so I, I should, should not kill the enemies from too far away. Ooh, oh, right, right, right. We need to go p dot palnum, right? Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh these are wrong numbers. <laughs> I mean, it looks, it looks, it looks strange and peculiar. <laughs> Let's go mult times two minus three. Let, 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 because it's like gonna be four. Okay, let's, let's try that. Let's just try that. Let's see. No. Oh. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so we, the silver looks good. Oh, the flashy 4x and the and the golden 3x. Okay, good. This is exactly what I needed. Ah, oh, look how juicy this is. We're getting the good feedback if we're hitting the enemies from close range. And of course, this is going to be like this juicy 4x on the thousand point enemy. That's going to be very desirable to get. So you need to get like up and close to the... You need to do the scary thing, but it's all worth in the end. And then we're going to explode things. Oh, we see already a problem that maybe will transition to our next topic, which is like when we bomb the big enemies, they do not, like sometimes they don't explode and you, you don't feel like you did anything. So we need maybe a bit of good feedback if a big enemy is already damaged. And maybe even that feedback is tied to whether a bomb will actually kill that enemy. Right, so what kind of indicator can we do for that? Uh, I wanted to kind of like make some enemies burn. Uh, let us start with like a simple implementation of that and let's go over the top in a second, okay? So let's go to the part where the enemies get hit. You see, this is already getting pretty, pretty elaborate, right? So if HP is down to zero, then all sorts of cool things happen. Else, 
And here I want to, well, we maybe don't need the else. Does that else cost us actually tokens? It does. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Let's not do it in else then here. So we're going to check if h, uh, if e dot hp, so if the enemy hp is smaller than, if it's smaller than the damage of the bomb, so if the, H, the enemy can be hit by the, the bomb, then, and we're going to go e dot burn equals true, right? So we're going to set some kind of flag that this enemy is now burning. We hit it and the next hit would make the enemy uh, explode. And then when we're drawing the enemies here, over when we're drawing the enemies, here's where we're drawing it, right? We're going to go if e dot burn then, by the way, we don't need that sealed indicator here anymore. Got to get rid of that one. Well, here we want to set a different palette. And I, this is something I will actually, again, copy. Uh, because it's going to be something similar that f to flash and W flash. It's just a whole bunch of numbers. Let me see. This is this, is this part here. We're going to call it pal burn. And again, it's a whole bunch of numbers. I, I kind of like tweak them a little bit. So it, it's going to be a flashing, but it's slightly different flashing from when, when the enemy flashes when you hit them. It's a slightly different flashing, right? Um, and we're going to use that to set to the enemy. So we're going to go pal burn when the enemy is burning. Uh, and that will basically override the flash here. Let's see. So you see, it's, it's like this yellow, right? It's, 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 it's yellow, it's yellow color. Now, obviously, this, there's a lot of problems. First of all, there's, not, there's no flashing. It's just like they turn yellow. That's not flashing. Let's do the flashing. Um, so we're gonna go and. Uh, I found out a good frequency is we uh, divide it, well, we do modulo on the T um, of 12. And if that's smaller than four, so it's not a, like a regular flashing, it's like, like uh, small blips, a little bit of a blip. Let's see how that works. So you see that kind of like, okay, this looks like it's about to explode, you know? Now, there is a bit of an issue here in that those are tiny enemies. They will get blown up by the bomb anyway, right? So it doesn't make sense that they are burning, right? That we don't need the indicator that they are burning. This is not important for those enemies. This is really only important for this type of enemy, right? So now it's burning and now I can bomb it, right? That's That was the idea. So uh, we want to maybe limit this effect only to the big enemies that have enough health to uh, to withstand the bomb when they spawn. And so the, the way to do this is probably we're gonna have to, um, let's see, when we spawn the enemy, when we do the HP, we're just gonna add another property that's good, it's called max HP, right? So we kind of save how much the uh, enemy had, how much HP the enemy had when they spawned. And here we only set the burn to true if E dot max HP is actually uh, bigger than than bomb DMG, right? Like this, right? So if the enemy, the maximum HP of the enemy is greater than a bomb, so if the enemy can technically survive being bombed, and after getting hit, it no longer can survive getting bombed, then it starts burning. Okay, so we see now the small enemy, the popcorn enemies don't don't burn anymore because they can get bombed anyway. Like this. <laughs> Oh, it's very satisfying. And the, the feedback is also really good. We're getting the pop-ups. Oh, so good. So now we're gonna see the big enemy burn. Right, 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 right. And then... Yes! And also this makes it so that when we bump an enemy, uh, it's still flashing. You still feel like, if, even if it doesn't explode, you still feel like you did something to the enemy. And I think this is very important. All right, but now let's push it a little bit harder. Let's push it a little bit harder. I want to actual, I want actual flames to appear on the enemy. This is maybe a little bit controversial. I don't know. I don't know, man. I <laughs> this is going to be a little bit over the top. But uh, yeah, let's let's do that. So again, I prepared some sprites and again, they will always be available in the doobly-doo. So here are little flames. It's just a little tiny sprite. It's a little tiny, it's gonna be fine. You do, we're not gonna feel the, the oh, it, look, it even fits almost perfectly in here. That it's, it, was, it was made to happen. You cannot deny that it, this, this, was, this was intentional, right? These little two sprite runes here. And then let's get them into the sprite editor. 
right? Just a little bit of a flamey thing. Now let's get that into the animation editor. Doesn't that look neat? Doesn't that look neat? A little flavor Rudy. Uh, it's, it's shaking a little bit. I think we need to tweak a little bit the, the origin. Yeah, I want the base, the, the uh, lower point of the, of the sprite. I want that to f be fixed, to be stable, because that's going to be the thing that attaches kind of like to the, to the actual sprite that is burning. And only like the, the upper part to be wiggling, you know, it's like this. Okay, so this works. Now we need to put those flames on top of the, um, of our, of our enemies. All right, basically here, instead of setting the burn to true, what I want to do instead is I want to create an array of particles. And I want to get that, like I want to fill that array with a bunch of particles that will be distributed along the sprite of the enemy. And those particles will be just like our little flames that are wheeling back and forth, yes? So we're gonna do something like local FLM, so like a flame, right? And we're gonna create a little a little flame rooney, right? And then we're gonna go e dot uh, or like add e dot burn comma FLM, right? We're gonna add that flame to the little to the array. So each enemy remembers which particles belong to that enemy. Uh, and we have to do this because when an enemy dies, we want to also delete those particles. Because otherwise those particles will stick around. Um, and then we're going to add parts uh, FLM, right? We're going to also add the, the particle to the particle list because we want to draw also the particles, right? Obviously. Uh, by the way, also we want to be, be like, if not eburn and right? So only if burn, if, if, if we want to trigger the burning only if there is no burning happening yet. All right, all that is left to do is for us to create a little, uh, a little sprite. So we're going to draw, it's going to be sprite. Now X, I'm not exactly sure. We're going to put it in the center of the, of the sprite, of the enemy for now. No, actually it's going to be zero because it's going to be re relative to the, to the enemy, right? And then Y is going to be zero. P lock, um, this is like this function that we had, we can lock sprites or we can lock particles to sprites and we did that, so that's P lock. Any is gonna be any lib uh, 18, I wrote it down, 18 is our little flame sprite. And then animation speed, I figured three is a good speed. Um, right, so let's see if this works. <laughs> let's just first see if this works. We, we should launch a little bit higher. What happened? Uh, okay, something is wrong with age. All oh, right, we didn't set a max age. Max age equals a thousand. All right, there it is, there it is, there's the flame. Oh, that looks actually really good. There's another flame. Now it's a little bit stupid that the flame is in the center of the enemy. <laughs> so let us distribute the flame a little bit. So I wrote a function. I don't know if this is a good function, uh, but let's, let's, let's try it out. So. Wait, don't we have a don't we have a range function? Range, R and D range, right? Yeah, yeah, we have this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Let's. Oh, you see, I'm 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 rewriting the code from from the, from the get go. So this should be like minus eight and eight, right? And then yeah, other direction we're gonna go. Um, minus twelve and twelve. Like, let's try like something like this. So now we, we are distributing the flames, or well, it, it's just one flame for now. But yeah, see now the flame is in, in this spot, and now the flame is in a different spot. But obviously the, the reason I did this is so we can have multiple flames. Uh, I think three is good. Like this. Right, so now we're looping it three times, so we have three frames. Frames are uh, something wrong. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This should not happen. That's correct. Okay, let's try that. So now we're repeating this three times. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Okay, <laughs> they're all bunched up. That's that's something that can happen. Oh yeah, see, see. Ah, oh, this looks sick. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh oh, you see the problem is now when the enemies die, the flames are on the ground. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing, but also absolutely not what we want to do. So when um, when we die, when an enemy actually dies, so that's actually right here, also here in this function. Um, so let me see, when HP is down to zero, uh, here's where we're deleting the enemy. Hmm, for B in all E dot, is, does that work? Just like loop through all of the burn and then del parts B. Uh, let's let's call it P because it's a particle after all. Like this, right? Oh, I mean. Yeah. Hey, it totally works. The flames are not get not get deleted and it turns out that if burn is set to nil, then there's just not going to be any looping. That's cool. That's very, very nice. So we don't have to even do like an if statement. Good. Yeah, yeah. Our enemies burn now. They burn now. <laughs> Proximity kill rewards has been also done and we also did the burn. We actually didn't even put it on the on the list. Um, let me see. Uh, update MSPR, uh, whatever. Tweak option muzzle flashes. The next big step, I'm going to write down the next big step is gonna be uh, hyper, just all that uh, is related to hyper. And I could start working on this right now, but I think it's best maybe to leave it for the next episode, so we're gonna have a big episode of all about hyper. For now, I wanna say the things I say at the end of each episode, which is a big thank you and a huge shout out to all of the people who are supporting the show on coffee.com who are making the show possible. Thank you so much for your support. And if you wanna support the show too, go check out coffee.com slash lazydev to find out how. And I also wanted to read out a comment. This is from Captain Classic 8624 on episode 83. Uh, and they said, games are never finished, they only abandoned. And this was a bit of an awkward interaction because I know something happened with YouTube. I, I haven't touched those comments, but he wrote a bunch of comments and they disappeared. I, I wanted to clarify what I meant. So um, I, I like this quote. Uh, this is something that definitely the sentiment that I also um, expressed in that is at some point you have to just like finish the game, right? Like you cannot polish the game forever. You can spend all your life making sure the game is perfect and it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be as perfect as the game in your mind. Which at this point at episode 92 <laughs> is something I feel very... <laughs> I should I should maybe take that advice myself. But don't you worry, we're getting there. But I did a little bit of counter argument here as well because I kind of don't like this, this idea that abandoned, you know, like <sighs> abandonment sounds bad and, and in fact the problem that we have with a lot of games is that they are quite often abandoned and never released. That is like a core issue of the games industry that the most majority of the games that are started never get finished because it's so different, difficult to deal with scope. So I would definitely make a huge difference between a game that is not perfect but released and a game that is truly abandoned. So that's something that I'd, I have a bit of an issue with the word abandonment. I would maybe say that games are never finished but only released. That would be, I think, a more fitting way to put this. Anyway, so this was an episode that I wanted to be full of gameplay, but apparently it was full of visual feedback. Well, gameplay is quite often about, all about visual feedback. See you on the next episode where it's gonna be all about hypers. Bye-bye, guys.